Pornhub has been caught admitting that they profit off of the sexual exploitation of minors and they do not care. Arden Young is an undercover journalist from Sound Investigations and she has released her latest report which shows employees at Pornhub saying not only do they know that porn is addictive, it's unhealthy, it's bad for the individual and bad for society, but also that there are minors not only accessing their site but also participating in the content that is uploaded on the site. Absolutely shocking stuff. Arden is with us here today to talk to us about this investigation. Wow, there is so much here that she has uncovered. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com, code Allie. Arden, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, for those who may not know, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Um, so I'm an investigative journalist, and I most recently went undercover to record various Pornhub employees, employees of Pornhub's parent company, which is now called ALO, um, admitting to illicit, illegal scandalous practices behind the scenes, including, but not limited to, not properly verifying age and consent of the videos, of the people in the videos um, going up on the sites. Okay. And why did you decide to launch this investigation? Uh, sexual exploitation has always had a, a close place in my heart. I grew up in Hollywood. Um, I was put in and witnessed a lot of very inappropriate situations. So I think that's what first piqued my interest about um, trying to do something about sexual exploitation. But really, um, what what got my eyes on Pornhub specifically was there was a 2020 New York Times article called The Children of Pornhub. You yeah. probably have read that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it detailed victims' attempts to get their abuse videos removed from Pornhub. Many of these victims were underage. And uh, I thought this was really interesting. And Pornhub claimed to change their ways after that article was released. They claimed to clean up their processes internally. But I just had a hunch and um, my my partner and I had a hunch that this just wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. So we decided to investigate and if we found evidence that they were still not verifying age and consent, then we would publish it. Okay. So these uh, investigations were just published a few weeks ago. When did they start? How, how long did this process go? Yeah, I was uh, recording employees undercover, I think from June through September of okay. 2023. Okay. Gotcha. But the process started before that, trying to track down the right people and making sure you're talking to the right people, right? Yeah, it started in February of 2023. Okay. So we'll get into more of that because I'm so, I'm so interested in how exactly you get these people to sit down and talk with you and tell you the things that they did. Um, a product manager at Pornhub, Mike Farley, he said that the adult entertainment industry and the product it sells – is actually unhealthy, addictive, and unethical uh, in the undercover videos that you obtained. And we'll play that in a second, but I want to set it up for some just some context for people because you hear porn advocates say that there's no such thing as a porn addiction. Actually, I think the DSM-5 um, even affirms this idea that you can't be addicted to porn. You might have some kind of sexual compulsion if you feel a need to watch it all the time, but there's no rewiring of the brain that happens. It's just a hobby that you can take on and it's not going to affect you mentally and emotionally. Of course, they're going to say this because they want more people to watch. Uh, and yet what you found is that the people at Pornhub, they know exactly what porn is doing. So I want to get your comments on that, but I'll go ahead and play um, the footage that you obtained. Do you think porn is addictive? I think so. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, 
180 million unique visitors a day is a lot. Even like Jordan Peterson, I know that he says like the there's not many studies on it. There's not a lot of like we don't really know the implications. But I can't be normal, I can't be healthy, I can't be like that must do something. Because that's like significant. It's more Not really. I don't think it's worried about ethics. It's a adult website. It's kind of the opposite of that. Okay, so there he is admitting that an adult website, a porn website, is the opposite of ethical and interesting that he cites Jordan Peterson and yeah, yeah saying that, okay, yeah, porn obviously is addictive. So what do you think about that? Well, I know that it is absolutely addictive. And Mike Farley, who you just saw, he's worked at Pornhub at a senior level for 11 years now. He was the number seven employee to ever be hired there. And he absolutely knows what he's he's talking about. He has Mm -hmm. a lot of seniority there. He's the product manager. He he manages the product, which is the pornography. Um, So... I believe him. He talked a lot about Jordan Peterson and how he really mirrors his worldview on many topics, including pornography. Really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. How do you live with that kind of incongruence, kind of pushing this product of sexual exploitation while also saying that your own values are about, you know, personal responsibility and making sure that you're not addicted to porn? Yeah, that was my question. He was he was very he was kind of a confusing person to me. Yeah. Um he had a lot of arrogance about what he said about the porn industry as a whole. Um you know, he still works there. He's worked there for 11 years. He had no plans of leaving. He was comfortable at his job. I'm sure they pay him very well. I think he just views it as a product. People are going to buy it. There's a demand, so we're creating it. And that's that. Yeah. I think that's his view on it. And he goes on to say, uh, he said, liberating, question mark. I don't know. I think it's just the easy way out. To me, it doesn't seem like something that would be good. I don't think anybody watches porn and then feels good about themselves after. It's like ecstasy to like, what the F am I doing? I definitely think porn addiction is definitely a thing. That's for sure. I don't think it's a positive thing in general. And then he goes on to cite what everyone just heard, 180 million, 180 million unique visitors in a day. That is shocking. It is. Um, I think Pornhub is still currently like the number eight most visited website in the world. Wow. Wow. And we've heard for a while, as you just mentioned, there was that 2020 article that there is not just sexual exploitation of adults happening on Pornhub. And, you know, a lot of people bring up consent as if consent is enough to determine whether or not something is virtuous. Something can be consensual and still wrong. It can still be immoral. It can still be unhealthy. And so even for the adults on the site and the people consuming it, it's unhealthy and immoral all around. But then you also have the child aspect, the minor aspect. There's been a lot of criticism of Pornhub in recent years for not verifying the age of the people in the videos that we're Mm -hmm. talking about children, we're talking about teenagers. In a lot of cases, we are talking about rape. Uh, When you brought this up, did it seem like he cared about, about the existence of these kinds of videos on Pornhub? Him personally, no, it did not seem like he cared. It was just a matter of fact, of course it happens, of course. He kept saying, of course. Wow. Um, And it's just something he shrugged off, which is so strange. And I talked to multiple employees who kind of seem to have a similar attitude. I'm sure it's very normalized for them. They've gotten very callous about um, pornography in general. Mm -hmm. I think many of them have to watch it to even do their jobs Yeah, um, many times. So I can't imagine what that Ugh. does to someone's mind. Right. Um, and in addition, uh, I also posed as an advertiser and called the um, customer support line for mm-hmm. the advertisers who advertise through Pornhub. And they said that if I uploaded underage videos as an advertisement, 
they would not suspend my account and they would not report it to law enforcement. So that's just another aspect of how someone can be exploited. A child can be exploited on a huge mainstream adult site like Pornhub. So you asked them specifically, hey, I'm an advertiser. If I want to upload content, uh, you know, sponsored content that includes children being raped, is that going to be a problem? Is that basically what you asked? The the question I posed to them was, hey, I'm new at this. Um, I have a bunch of videos just plopped in my lap to upload, but these girls look super young. What's the process? And they go, well, we'll deem what's underage. We have our processes. Um, but if we do deem something underage, your account is not likely to be suspended. And then we also ask, do you report to law enforcement? And they said no. Okay. So basically what they told you is that if you uploaded a bunch of content of children being raped, they, I'm guessing they didn't specify an age, any child could have been a toddler, whatever. They're not going to report that to law enforcement. From my understanding, they just said, that is not part of our job. We don't report to law enforcement. They just want the money. Wow. That is insane. Not surprising, of course. It's not that I imagined that they would have some kind of moral limits, but just right. shocking to hear. Yeah, shocking. All right, quick pause to tell you about our first sponsor for the day, and that is a pro-life diaper company called Every Life. Now, you might be thinking, shouldn't all diaper companies be pro-life? Well, yeah, they should, but unfortunately, they're not. A lot of the major diaper companies actually donate some of their profits to organizations like Planned Parenthood, or they support politicians that support Planned Parenthood. It's absolutely wild, but you don't have to worry about that with Every Life. They're a pro-life diaper company. They have um, uh, they have an incredible mission with their Buy for a Cause bundle that supports families in need of essential items like diapers and wipes. So when you purchase that Buy for a Cause bundle, you are supporting moms in need. Also, these are super high quality diapers, high performing premium diapers without any fragrances, dyes, lotions, uh, latex parabens or phthalates. And so you can trust uh, the kind of material that you are putting on your child and also where you are spending your money. You know that it's not only getting quality diapers, but you are supporting the cause of life. So go to everylife.com, use promo code Ali10 for a discount. Everylife.com, code Ali10. Everylife.com, code Ali10. So you asked uh, someone else, Dylan Rice, senior scriptwriter at ALO, um, about the age ID loophole because the advertising rep that you talked to, they said, okay, we've got our processes for figuring out if the people in the video are underage. But as you found out, they're not actually concerned about how old these participants are. So here's a video of Dylan Rice basically saying that. It's hard because how do you get somebody to prove that they're above, above age because if they can get a fake ID? Do you think there's like videos of underage still getting through? Of we don't know who that is. We don't have consent of that person. And we're running ads, like as a business, we're monetizing content that we don't know where this comes from. We don't know who's on that video. We don't know the age of the person on the video. This used to happen all the time, but we would never just, we would just say nothing about it. Like, we just be like, okay, whatever. It's like something that you just shut up. Like, just don't say nothing. Like, just be quiet. So they don't know. They have no idea how old the people are in the videos. Uh, Farley also talked about a 14-year-old girl who had sent a naked video to an older boy who then uploaded it to Pornhub without her permission. The video got millions of views on Pornhub. She had repeatedly reached out to Pornhub to take it down, but they didn't take it seriously, according to Farley. And this was included in that article that you referenced earlier, uh, the children of uh, the children of Pornhub. Um, but... Um, Dylan Rice said about that the problem was the way he uploaded it it looked like she was uploading it it took years for the content moderator to deal with it in the meantime according to the New York Times piece that covered this um, the girl had been suicidal she'd been drug addicted she's now living in her car as a result of being traumatized by the video's effect on her life and this is happening supposedly many many times a day young women girls sexual content of them either being raped or not is being uploaded to Pornhub and it's ruining their lives. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the people that you talked to, when you talked to them about this, they didn't really seem concerned about that. No, it, they shrugged it off. It is what it is. It was a bad time the company went through. It was described as Doom's Month for Pornhub by Mike Farley. It's just like a, a bad patchy period they went through, but now they're through it. <laughs> a, so bad PR mm -hmm. showing that there was child sexual exploitation on the website. They just had to kind of get through it and push past people's concern about it and just keep going? I mean, did they change any of their policies? They did. So um, they now require an ID if you want to upload to the site. So as an uploader, you have to upload your ID. This doesn't fix the loophole still that Mike Farley describes just because if um, a face isn't shown in a video, which is super, super common, how are you going to match a face on an ID to someone's body, which is a really good point. Yeah. Um, I believe that now they require, uh, since actually since we published our investigation, they now require each person in a video to have an ID uploaded by the main uploader. Um, I don't know how strictly that's being enforced. That's something we don't know right. yet. And yeah. Dylan Rice just said, if you have a fake ID, then you have a fake ID and they're not going and trying to verify that. Right. And it still doesn't address the loophole if, you know, you just can't match a face to someone's, you know, body parts. Yeah. You could just habits. upload yeah. anyone's IDs and it doesn't actually verify anything. And here is Mike Farley saying that this is sought too. How are you going to tell me, like, who's in that video of the girl's not showing her face? Like, that wouldn't hold in court. That would be the loophole that I always, like, I look at that and I'm like, that's stupid, but everybody is just kind of rolling with it. Why do they just roll with it? Why don't they say something? It costs money. Who exploits the loophole? Everybody. Everyone. You make a lot of money. Do you rape this? Use it? Or? Of course. Of course. We've brought it up to the CPO, we've brought it up to the CLO, and they're both telling us it's all good. And the CPO is especially telling us, like, F it's all good, like, stop. So they know the like, risk. Sh like, shut know. up. Okay, so they know the loophole is being used to include underage people in these videos. And the people at the top are actively saying, stop talking about it because it costs money. Like, what does he mean by that? It costs money to enforce any kind of real age standard yeah so another thing he says is that if we were to address this loophole we would actually be spending money on making less money so that wouldn't make sense mm -hmm. so it costs money to be compliant is what he's saying and he also says as a business you don't want to be more compliant than you absolutely have to be okay got it gosh the love of money is mm -hmm. the root of all kinds of evil. Uh, Farley says this. He says, if you think of like the average guy is able to see at any time that he wants thousands of the hottest women on earth naked at any point that they want, he said, every time they watch pornography, you're going through like whatever, 10 videos, right? That's like 10 girls per day at whatever time you're doing it a week for years in your brain, your brain thinks that you've seen them in person. Like there's no difference. There's no way that's normal. That can't be normal. That can't be healthy. That must do something because that's significant. And not only that, but they're seeing unrealistic depictions of women, unrealistic depictions of sex. And they're seeing underage girls that may be in their head or maybe they are being told that that girl's 25 really she's 15 that completely warps someone's attractions what turns them on what they are going to try to pursue in real life what they think about the average you know woman and mother oh my gosh I can't even imagine how much that ruins your potential for having a healthy relationship understanding of yourself and the people around you Absolutely. And not to mention that one of the most popular categories on Pornhub and really any given porn site is the teen category. Mm. And Gosh. many of these porn sites have now come back and said, you know, we mean 18 and 19 year olds. But it's, it goes without saying that there are so many people who have the desire to see a minor um, do something sexual, and that's absolutely disgusting. And in one of the other videos, Dylan Rice, the senior script writer, does say that 
ads where guys look to be about 15 years old do the most conversion rates and make the most money what and that it guys dro- yeah wow so um porn porn actors who are legal adults but look to be 15 and he showed me a photo of one he looks like he's about 12 or 13 oh my um that gosh. he makes the most money and his videos make the most money because it draws pedophiles and young teens so um, they are purposefully creating videos, cutting ads that appeal to pedophiles because in his words, he says, you can turn pedophiles into whales, which means they're big spenders. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I mean, of course, of course, of course they think this. They want to monetize every kind of paraphilia, every kind of sexual perversion, They do not care if it's rape. They don't care if it's pedophilia. They don't care what kind of scum is on their site as long as it is making them money. And actually, they're so adamant about this that any effort uh, toward uh, age verification, they are going to protest. There have been several states that have now tried to uh, require IDs to access pornography sites. So, for example, 2023, Louisiana, Utah, Mississippi, Arkansas, Virginia passed laws with overwhelming bipartisan support that require IDs to access pornography sites to prevent these sites from illegally serving their products to children. By Pornhub's own admission, Pornhub's traffic dropped 80 percent in Louisiana after the new law enforced Pornhub to require ID verification for its users. And uh, in response to this law, Pornhub began lawfare against states that enacted similar laws and is protesting by blocking access to its sites altogether in many states. So what they're trying to say is, no, we want young teenagers to be able to access our site. And if you don't allow minors to access pornography through Pornhub, then we will sue you. We will sue you, the state of Louisiana, the state of North Carolina, Montana, all of these other states in Texas doing the same things. And we will make it so difficult for you to gain support because we will take porn away from all of the adult users that you have in that state Mm -hmm. where you feel pressure then to change the law, which is really, really just sick. Yes, and they strike a chord with their users, their adult users, um, under the guise of free speech. So they say that asking to verify age in a state to access pornography is actually a violation of your free speech. And um, I'm a huge believer in free speech. I love free speech. But um, when it comes to protecting children from destructive content, children cannot consent to viewing that kind of content yeah um that's that's where free speech ends yeah well there have always been limitations to free speech and while i am a big supporter of free speech in the first amendment too you wouldn't be you know doing what you do i wouldn't be doing what i do without free speech and so i'm i'm very thankful for that it is my belief that pornography does not fall under the umbrella of free speech that it is all obscene but especially when you are talking about children and also it does not limit free speech to restrict access from children to certain kinds of content of course All right. Second sponsor is Jace Medical. We talk a lot about making sure that we are prepared for emergencies should things really hit the fan. And hey, it's 2024 and election year. We don't know what's going to happen. One thing that you do need to be prepared for in case of an emergency is having your supply of medications that you rely on, whether that's the daily prescriptions that you and your family takes or whether that is uh, antibiotics that you might need in a particular situation. And Jace Medical ensures that you have a year-long supply of of these medications. When you go to Jace Medical, you go through their telemedicine process. It's highly confidential and they make it really easy for you. You can get a year-long supply of these most needed antibiotics and then also the daily prescriptions that you and your kids and your spouse all take. So go to jacemedical.com, enter code Allie at checkout for a discount on your order. Go to J-A-S-E medical.com, code Allie, jacemedical.com, code Allie. Mm-hmm. 
how did you get in touch with these people? Like, tell us about the process because yeah, absolutely. Um, how did you get Farley and the other guy to sit down with you? It kind of looks like y'all were on a date. So how does yeah. this work? Yeah, so we use all publicly available information we found online to see who was working for ALO. ALO has hundreds of different companies under it. That includes Pornhub, of course, but there's other websites they own. Um, popular ones are like Reality Kings, Brazzers, uh, Men.com, things like that. And um, some of them were dates, fake dates. Um, and some of them were professional meetings as well. I got in touch with them uh, on professional sites in a professional way. and Like through LinkedIn. Did, so did you tell – in the professional meetings, did you tell them that you were a journalist? Is that No. Okay. No. Okay. It was still undercover. So, for example, one of the employees had his own business that he ran on the side, and he developed his own app. Um, and it was an app that was – to help medical professionals um, schedule appoint appointments and things like that. And so I contacted him pretending to be in the medical field, and okay. I wanted to talk to him about his app. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And you connected with some of them via dating apps. Mm -hmm. Is that how you met Farley? It is. What's, what's really strange is, you know, there's so many people on dating apps and it's like a needle in a haystack. Yeah. The chances of you matching up with someone who actually works for the company that you are interested in is so slim. Yeah. He was one of the first people I saw on this app and he didn't even have his company name listed on it. Wow. He just said, um, it just said tech. Okay. And I just had a gut, kind of a God moment, and I decided to swipe right and ask him where he worked. Okay. And the first message he sent me was, I'm the product manager for Pornhub. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So how many dates, quote unquote, did y'all go on? Two. Just two dates. Mm -hmm. And he freely gave you all of this information without even really knowing you at all, right? Right. Were you nervous? I, were you nervous going on a date, a fake date with someone who worked at Pornhub? Um, no. And I think I could probably thank my past in Hollywood uh, for that because there's all sorts of people I've dealt with on a daily basis who do things I disagree with for work. Um. And really, Mike Farley, as a person, person to person, having a regular conversation, he's just another regular guy. He was nice to me. Um, he was respectful. But he just did something for work that um, is immoral. It's disgusting. Yeah. And immoral. Wow. Okay. That is – that's so interesting that you found him on the dating app just almost by happenstance. Yeah. And do you think that your background in acting, because people may not know, but you had a you had a role in Modern Family at one point and you've done some other acting gigs. Do you think it helped you in these situations to be able to like call the advertising rep and to like get in touch with these people and basically convince them that you're, you know, someone who just wants to go on a date with them or whatever? Yeah, I do think it helped. I think um, being an actor actually led me to do undercover work in the first place because um, I thought I could get away with building these characters and also just having the guts to stand up in front of someone and essentially just do like a live theater without them knowing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it definitely contributed. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And have they tried to, now that the investigations have been published, have they tried to uh, contact you? Like, did Mike Farley reach out to you and say, oh, my gosh, I thought we were going on a date and you were recording me this whole time? How dare you? No, I'm sure that the lawyers there told them not to have any more contact with me or us. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they we have gotten contact from Pornhub's lawyers, though, and they've issue, issued us like four legal threats now. Saying what? Um, they demand that we remove all of the videos that we've posted and they also demand that we save all of our records um, pending further legal action. And it's it's really funny because they're 
they accuse us of doing all these things. They accuse us of, um, they accuse me of lying about myself, pretending to go on dates in order to get information. And it's like, yeah, you're just describing undercover journalism. Yeah. Like, it's not a crime. We operated legally. Uh, these videos were all filmed in Canada. We have Canadian legal counsel that approved everything we did. Um, they really don't have anything to get yeah. us on. It's not illegal to lie anyway. Right. And it's not the same thing because you are undercover and you're doing it for this purpose of journalism. But... Did they say that they have any legal basis to come after you guys? Yeah, they did accuse us just generally of operating illegally. They didn't expand Specify upon that. Just illegal yeah, in they, general. They also claim that this is disinformation, that things were taken out of context. It's like, yeah, we left as much context yeah. in as possible right. without publishing like a two hour long yeah. recording of a random conversation. So. I love when people say that and they never explain like what context was left out and how the context would change what was right. being said. Like, yeah. okay, let's let's hear it then. Let's yeah. hear it. It's interesting how they only care about ethics for other people and not for themselves. Absolutely. All of a sudden, all of a sudden when they're dealing with a journalist, they're very concerned with honesty and transparency and your real identification and who you actually are and the ethics that you are operating under, but not when it comes to them making money off of the sex sexual exploitation exactly. of minors. And you know, they use these exact words. They said you non-consensually recorded and uploaded videos of our employees. And I don't know why the lawyers even <laughs> thought it was a good idea to put that oh, in there because it's just so ironic. The irony. Yeah. Yes. I don't think that they probably didn't even see it. Yeah. They probably yeah. didn't even see the irony. Yeah. That's I, unbelievable. I thought their lawyers would be better than that. But. Yeah. Yeah. Another pause to tell you about NetSuite, and this is specifically for business owners. So if you own your own business, you need to listen up, and you need to know these three numbers, 37,000, 25, one, 37,000, 25, one, 37,000. That's the number of businesses that have upgraded to NetSuite by Oracle. It's the number one cloud financial system, streamlining everything, accounting, financial management, inventory, HR, more. 25, NetSuite turns 25 this year, 25 years of helping businesses do more with less. One, because your business is one of a kind. So you get a customized solution for all of your key performance indicators in one efficient system with one source of truth. You can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything that you need to grow and stay organized all in one place. Download NetSuite's popular KPI checklist designed to give you consistently excellent performance absolutely free at netsuite.com slash Allie. That's netsuite.com slash Allie. Get your own KPI checklist, netsuite.com slash Allie. Okay, tell me what has the impact been? Because we were talking before the cameras were rolling about a class action lawsuit that's now taking place yeah. in Alabama, right? Yeah, so there's been two class action lawsuits where victims of trafficking and, and rape um, that was monetized on Pornhub are like suing the companies. So in one, we were cited as evidence, our videos were cited. And then in this new one out of Alabama, um, these are child sex trafficking victims. And Mike Farley and Dylan Rice, who you see on the videos, they were subpoenaed, so they're going to have to testify um, as witnesses. Wow. And so what could the potential impact of that be? Well, I hope Pornhub is held liable for, and it's likely going to be a settlement situation. Yeah. But I hope they're held liable for a lot a lot of money. Yeah, And absolutely. they are um, going through a criminal case in the Eastern District of New York for profiting off of sex trafficking. They admitted mm -hmm. to profiting off of sex trafficking and they were put on a three-year probationary period. It's a slap on the wrist. Um, and if they're on their best behavior for three years, their criminal charges get dropped. Wow. Goodness. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Uh, this is according to 
Exodus Cry. This is an organization that fights against trafficking and has talked a lot about how porn and sex trafficking really go hand in hand. No matter if you claim that everyone is an adult and everyone consents, the fact of the matter is, as a consumer, you can't know that. There's no way for you to know that. Pornhub doesn't even know that itself. According to a 2020 survey, survey, the majority of children are exposed to porn by age 13, with some as young as seven. Most of the time it's unintentional or unwanted. In a study of 4,000 heterosexual porn scenes, 35 to 45 percent contain an act of physical aggression, mostly against women. According to a meta-analysis of 22 studies from seven countries, porn use is associated with increases in physical aggression. An analysis of 12,323 people People found that exposure to porn may increase the risk for committing sexual offenses. And I saw uh, this in the Daily Mail just a couple days ago. British children commit, according to this study, 18 rapes a day. Shock official figures reveal 15,000 rapes and sex attacks by under 18s in 2022 with access to violent online porn blamed for normalizing criminal behavior. I absolutely think that there is a causal relationship between the pervasiveness of sexual assault, especially when it comes to minors, and pornography. When that just becomes normalized in your mind, of course you're going to be more likely to carry it out, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, I grew up in the digital age where internet porn was available, and I definitely remember unfortunately learning way too much at a young age about certain sexual things because the boys at school would talk about them and treat the girls a certain way and even go as far as touching some girls a certain way and this was because they were at home and and pornography was available to them online at the tip of their fingers I mean um, the iPhone was out when I was in fifth grade so um, this stuff was all available when I was super young yeah Gosh, parents, I think, were so unequipped in a lot of ways when the iPhone came out just because it was so different than the sidekick or the Blackberry or the Palm Pilot, which is probably before your time. But (laughs) access to the Internet in the palm of our hands was really kind of new. Of course, everyone had like a family computer that Mm -hmm. you could go to. But when I was growing up, we didn't even have our own laptops. Um, And a lot of people didn't even have TVs in their room. And then we go from not having our own personal devices to having the entire world wide web in the palm of our hands. And it's only gotten worse. I'm hoping that parents are more equipped than they were, you know, 10 to 15 years ago, because we know the effect of this. But you know, as a mom myself of young kids, I worry not just about, you know, what they stumble upon. And obviously we are very protective, but the kind of people that they are going to be around. Um, I'm concerned about other parents. Like are other parents, are you guys going to ensure that your kids are protected, that they're not watching pornography, that they're not accessing this stuff so that their behavior doesn't you know, negatively affect the other people around them. I'm worried about that. I'm worried about both the boys and the girls that are going to be affected by the pervasiveness of pornography and how it rewires their brain and hurts their relationships. It is a worry. And it's it's just an ev- inevitable now for young people. They're going to be exposed to pornography in one way or another if they're sent to school, if they have access to devices or if their friends have access, or their friends' older brothers have access to devices. Um, I think we're at a stage now where parents must start teaching their children in an age-appropriate way about porn and how to recognize it and know that if they're ever shown it or they ever, ever see it, they should report it to their parent or trusted adult immediately. Um, it's sad, but this is where we are, and... Uh, There's actually a wonderful children's book called Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Mm. um, that parents can read aloud to their kids. And it it teaches kids in an age-appropriate way how to recognize what pornography is and what they should do if they're exposed to it. Yeah, I think that a lot of people think, especially for like teen boys, that, oh, it's just normal. Of course, they want to see naked women. Oh, this is just like the age of Playboy. Well, first of all, that's always wrong, whether it's a Playboy magazine or pornography, but even what they're seeing online is not the same as a still picture. They are being exposed to more and more violent content, more and more pedophilic 
content. And by just normalizing that and just saying, oh, boys will be boys, you have no idea how you are ruining them for future healthy relationships and their own sexual health. It's really scary. Oh, I, I totally agree. Um, yeah. Gosh. There's <laughs> just such, I mean, it's such a widespread societal impact. I mean, I am of I, I am of the opinion that there should be uh, a ban on pornography. I don't see any benefit to society. I don't think that it falls under the umbrella of free speech at all. And you could argue, well, people are going to try to find it anyway, and then it's just going to go underground or whatever. <laughs> I mean, I think those are all very stupid arguments. By that logic, nothing should be illegal. We should just legalize everything because then it's less dangerous that way. But right. I think that there need to be serious ramifications for the exploitation of bodies. I simply do, especially especially when it comes to children. I see no reason why anyone who perpetrates, consumes, or profits off of the trafficking of children should see the light of day. I don't see any good reason for that. I totally agree. And um, I think a realistic ask, at least for us, for sound investigations and, and myself, is similar to how cigarettes, tobacco, um, went through a complete... <laughs> They had to have much improved transparency over the past several decades because they were branded as healthy and, and doctors were endorsing smoking and things like that. Um, there was a huge wake-up call that forced them to be more transparent about the effects of smoking. And so I think similar with pornography, there needs to be some sort of warning on these sites saying, these are the societal implications of pornography use, and these are the health implications of pornography use. And if you want to proceed, then go ahead. Um, the new Texas bill, actually, that verifies age of a user on a pornography site also requires a disclaimer like that now. Hmm. So I have yet to check if Pornhub has complied, um, but I've been meaning to check that. Yeah. And I mean, at the very least, I want pornography to be so stigmatized, kind of like how cigarettes have gotten because of the PR push against cigarettes for so long that, yes, of course, there are still people who smoke cigarettes, but yeah. it is dramatically less than what it was 50 years ago. I want porn to be so stigmatized to where people, I mean, you just don't use it. And it's not something that's pervasive. It's not something that's mainstream. It's not something that people are proud of that they would ever openly advocate for. Um, it's not that I don't want people who struggle with porn addiction to be able to free to be free to get help. Of course, I think that that is good. But things deserve stigma. Stigmas exist for a reason. Mm -hmm. And um, pornography is one of those things. The sexual exploitation of people should absolutely be stigmatized and pushed as much to the margins of society as possible. So thank you so much for playing a role in that and trying to hold them to account. I'm sure that was just tough mentally and emotionally to have to listen to all of that. It was. Um, in the moment, it, it sounds really strange. Yes, it was disturbing, but it was actually exciting for me to be able to actually get these admissions on camera because they were my suspicions for such a long time. So just to have someone not stick to the normal PR adult industry response and really tell me what was really going on, that was exciting. Yeah. So um, once that started coming out of Mike Farley and Dylan Rice's mouth, I really was like, oh. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell me also just a little bit of background about who you are. I know that you were raised in Hollywood, but I've heard you mention God in this interview. Does your faith play a role in your desire to expose what's going on in the adult industry? Yeah, my faith does play a role, actually. Um, so I was, I was saved in 2020. Um, I grew up going to church. I grew up professing uh, as a Christian, but really had a realization in 2020 where everything seemed to be hitting the fan and there's so many disasters all around us. 
um, that I I wasn't saved. And so... Um, was I, there anything in particular that you heard or made you realize, okay, this faith that I've been professing my whole life, it's not really real to me? Yeah, actually, a really sweet friend of mine, we're still really good friends, um, we went out to lunch together, and at the time, I thought he was one of those crazy Christians, but okay. I thought he was really nice, so we were friends, Yeah, and he asked me if I was Christian, and I said yes, and then he said, you know, you're telling me all these things about your life and your personal life, but you tell me that you're a Christian, and they just don't line up, and he said it was so much love and concern Aww. for me. Um, that what was your immediate reaction? Did I cried. You, you did? Yeah, I cried. And, um, oh man, it took me a long time, but I, I didn't, I walked away from that conversation so different. Mm. It took me a while to completely surrender. Um, but that conversation was a huge turning point that I believe I led to my salvation. Yeah. Um, Actually, it's so funny. You've had Ginger and Jeremy Volo on your show. Mm -hmm. I attended their church, and Jeremy actually um, married my husband and I oh, at really? our wedding. Oh, yeah. How long have you been married? Two years. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wow. All right. I want to talk to y'all about the new documentary that is out on Blaze Originals. This is by none other than Glenn Beck, and he traveled to Liberty County, Texas, to tell you the real story of Colony Ridge. I had not heard about this, but a crazy thing is happening. This is an area that is growing extremely fast, like strangely fast at the rate of 200 lots per week. And what Glenn has found is that the people living here are mostly illegal immigrants. They are mostly Hispanic non-citizens. So what is going on here? Who is behind the building of this community, the building of Colony Ridge? That's exactly what Glenn Beck is going to tell you. If you go to blazeoriginals.com, use code Colony Ridge, you get $30 off an annual subscription. So you not only get access to this fascinating docu-series, you also get access to all other kinds of behind the paywall content. Go to blazeoriginals.com. Use code Colony Ridge for your $30 discount. That's blazeoriginals.com, code Colony Ridge. So, what has it been like since then? Tell me just a little bit more about like your faith journey and I guess meeting your husband and getting married and all of yeah. that since 2020. So for the past four or so years. Um, it's been a lot of up and down. I, I think first being saved, it's so natural to be on fire for God. And oh, it was such a great time for me. Um, I've really had to practice a lot of discipline and I still need to be more disciplined about being in my Bible and prayer and just not thinking like the world thinks because I was in that for so long. Um, so it's up and down, but God is good. Yeah. <laughs> and has extended so much grace to me. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. what does your husband think about all of this? What you do? Was he concerned at all when you were like going on fake dates with with the porn hub guys? <laughs> he is concerned, but he's so supportive. And yeah. what's so funny is he actually went on one of these meetings with me yeah. and recorded from afar just to make sure everything was safe. Good. And so he's been so good in so many ways. Yeah. And he's made sure that I'm safe in some of these situations. So. That's good. I was just telling a friend that like good, supportive, loving, amazing husbands are like the cheat code to life. I mean, it just makes everything better. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Um, well, thank you so much. And also, just for everyone listening and watching, you're a fellow related gal. Yes. So Arden is is one of ours. You were saying that you listen to the podcast, yes, which so makes me so happy. Your podcast is like the only po podcast I consistently listen to on oh, my thanks. own time and have, I think, since 2020, just around when I was saved. Um, so thank you so much. It's helped me really stay um, in the word and thinking like a Christian should think instead of viewing things 
uh, like others do. And um, I love your courage to speak oh, truth. Well, thank so you. thank you so much. Well, you too. You too. I always say I have the best listeners and viewers ever. And Arden is just a great example of that. And your courage will inspire other people's courage too. And so thank you so much. I just pray that God continues to give you favor and to give you access into the places and to the people that you need to go into and to shine a light in the darkness. Uh, what is what is the verse in Ephesians that take no part in the is it the foolish ways of darkness, but instead unfruitful? Expose them. Yeah, unfruitful. You're right. Yeah. Unfruitful ways of darkness, but ex- instead expose, expose them. them. Yeah. And that's what you're doing. So thank you so thank much, Arden. You. And how can people follow you and support you? Yeah. So I'm most active on Twitter X, and my handles Arden underscore Young underscore. And there's also the Sound Investigations page. We post updates too as well. Um, but really, that's where I post everything, and hopefully we'll have more good updates soon Okay, and more videos. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Arden, for taking the time to come on. Thank you, Allie. Mm-hmm.